So now let's go back to our example where we have this x1, x2 up to xn where each of these xi's are normal with mu and sigma square where I, I assume okay let's call it as theta theta is unknown and sigma square is known my my unknown parameter is only theta here what was our estimator sorry what was our hypothesis testing here okay let me now this one I want to see whether my hypothesis 0 is whether theta is equals to theta naught and h1 is theta is not equals to theta naught. Okay, let us consider these two scenarios. What was our rejection LRT? what is the value what is the condition it gave us what was the value of this lrt x bar minus theta naught divided by sigma square by n and our rejection region was if lambda x is less than or equals to c you reject all those samples okay now was it this or there was an exponent it was exponential value of this I think this was exponential value of this right can you check and also there is a square I mean of course this the Gaussian has to play a role here right this, this structure is coming from the Gaussian this is the thing and now this is my lambda of x and I want this lambda of x to be less than r c and uh, that is my rejection r is okay now what does this translate to if I have to plug in this so this will translate to x bar minus theta naught square greater than or equals to minus log c and uh, sigma square by n uh, log c minus maybe sigma square when I'll write like this sigma square by n that's it right is there a square root here can you check no, I think there is no square root there was n here and this was like a simply a sigma square see this part was numerator was simply the exponent in the Gaussian term right that is simply sigma square and we did some manipulation and we got an n term here just cross verify this now this is going to be minus log c and uh, sigma square by n sorry there is also 2 here which I will write 2 here minus so what is the value of c what is the range of c here c 0 0 to 0 we know that this has to be between 0 to 1 because lambda x has is is a ratio which is always between 0 1 and because log c is between 0 1 we know that log of c is going to be a negative quantity and because of this this whole quantity is a positive quantity agree 
okay now how does this translate to this translate to x bar minus theta naught i can write it as to be greater than or equals to minus 2 log of c into sigma square by n agree which i can further say now this is now x bar This is like x bar minus theta naught less than or equals to minus 2 log c sigma square by n less than or equals to square root of minus of minus 2 log c sigma square by n. Right, everybody agree with this computation. Now, what I will do is x bar minus theta naught, I will get this sigma square by n from both sides. Now, this is going to be minus of 2 log c and minus of minus 2 log c. And as always, we know that this is going to be distributed what? So, I am going to write this is going to be minus 2 log c minus of minus 2 log c. Agree? Now, see that it is kind of giving me already some range here what I am doing is so what I am going this is going to give me if this condition holds if my x bar is such that x bar minus theta is going to lie in this interval I am going to accept that x bar to coming from parameter theta naught or no this is basically rejection region right I have basically translated that rejection region into this interval here okay so if my x bar so if this x bar right now i don't know uh, this uh, x bar let me just put it in terms of x bar is now this is going to be theta naught plus minus 2 log c sigma square by n this one theta naught minus minus 2 log c right ok maybe I will just get rid of uh, this sigma square by in here anyway this is uh, mm, these quantities are known and uh, this is like uh, so there is going to be a sigma square by n here sigma square by n here and another sigma square by n huh? what happened this one so I have taken theta naught this side right that is fine and uh, then theta naught also this side what is the issue I am not getting no this is correct right this is correct when I remove the modulus this is correct no okay let's uh, do this when okay suppose let's say when this is a positive quantity okay you are saying this should be there and when it is a negative quantity okay let me write it okay let me write this this quantity whenever this suppose this quantity happens to be positive the equality remains like this minus 2 log c sigma square by n and when there is a negation of this I have to take negation both sides this is like x bar minus theta naught and uh, so this is going to be less than or equals to minus of minus 2 log sigma square by like this and now because of this
okay let us write this now if I have to get this x bar minus theta naught is going to be upper bounded by minus 2 log sigma square by n and then this is going to be minus But see, there is a issue here, right? Something is wrong. We know that 2 log c is going to be negative quantity minus 2 log c is going to be a positive quantity. So, this entire thing, this entire thing is a positive quantity, but now this entire thing is a negative quantity. How can this happen? Okay, fine. Let us do that. Now, what we have probability that x bar equals to this and this. Now, how you are going to write this? What we have written is actually and right like this and this. So, how can this happen like? So, this that is what I am saying this is a inside that is a positive quantity. It has to be greater than positive quantity, but less than a negative quantity. How can that happen? Okay, we have to start with this. Maybe let us find up. So, this is the condition we have right and we know that okay x bar minus theta naught we know this has to satisfy how you are going to define in terms of the intervals now we have to work out this is true with this is this true if this is x bar minus three, this happens to a positive quantity this either this or this has to happen this is or this is not an and condition okay Okay. So now probability that okay now how we will write it x bar minus theta naught Okay, now let us say, let us define this. I know that my quantity minus 2 log c sigma square by n has to be here and uh, minus of this and minus 2 log c sigma square by n has to be here. And what I am asking is, this x bar minus theta naught should be greater than this and less than this. Okay. Whenever my x bar minus theta naught is so happening, whether it is falling in, in this region or this region, what I am going to do? I am going to reject and I am going to accept whenever it is going to be in this region. Okay, so let us focus on that acceptance region. I think that is where the confusion came. We were not interested. Okay, now this is going to give me the rejection region and if I have to get the acceptance region, then this has to be x bar minus theta naught has to be less than or equals to minus 2 log c sigma square by n and minus of minus 2 
log sig sigma square by n. So, this is the rejection and this is the acceptance region. This is clear. Now, I am going to call it as A, this region, all the x, x's such that x bar minus theta naught. So, maybe now I can take that theta naught on the other side. Whenever this x bar is such that it is theta naught plus minus 2 log c sigma square by n and uh, theta naught minus of minus 2 log c sigma square by square by n this is going I am going to accept it. Okay, now this is for a given theta naught right theta naught is fixed and for that parameter I am trying to define this acceptance region and I am going to call it as A of theta naught. So, whenever my sample is falling in this region that x bar minus theta I am going to accept it. Now, the question is, uh, is it possible for us to translate this into the confidence interval? Okay, so, we will discuss that in the next class, but first thing we need to note here is that does it matter what particular theta 0 that we are looking here? This could be any theta. Okay, so, for any theta, I can look for such conditions and this is what the rest of the things remain the same and this is what we will use to come up with our confidence interval that should work for any given sample x. Okay, so, we will continue that in the next class.